So yes, I'm Colin, uh, I'm the administrator of centimeter.ca. Um, so we're a full service dealer. We stock all the Elmwood product range. And uh, we don't have special services, but we focus on keeping a lot of stock, shipping quickly, and getting things to our customers as fast as possible. So today we're talking about LoRa radio. Um, a lot of people uh, use the uh, LoRa radio for short range RTK, and uh, we're trying to figure out how you know what what's the maximum range we can uh, get with our LoRa radio. So here's a little walkthrough. Some simple theory about why LoRa is used. So just basic stuff here. You know we're looking for accuracy. Um, our accuracy is obtained through the corrections that come from our base. Corrections are, well, there we go, I said that already. Um, <laughs> so if we want real-time accurate information, we need the corrections to come in real time, and that's where the radio comes in. Um, we need that uh, good communication channel between the base and the rover. Um, the communication, this is really nice, you guys. You fixed my presentation. It looks good. Um, thank you. Uh, so uh, communication, we could do radio. We could do cellular, satellite, uh, or other means. Um, cellular can be quite useful, but it's restricted to operating within the service area. And um, obviously, there's a cost for that. Um, with satellite, uh, you know, it's great. It's available worldwide, but even uh, probably higher cost, thousands probably. With radio, um, there's the licensed type, unlicensed type, um, but with license, unlicensed, we are free to operate in those bands without cost. Um, so when choosing to use LoRa radio for your corrections, you're relying on your hardware and nothing else. It's total independent operation. So right here we've got no third-party services, no subscription, no license fees, no extra cost. So it's great. Um, the other thing is that uh, the LoRa radio operates on extremely low power. Um, our output is uh, one-tenth of a watt, 100 milliwatts. Um, so that's great for the extended battery life, uh, longevity of, uh, of the uh, Reach product, the Reach RS+. Plus. Um, so we can get 30 hours. It's great. All right. So uh, the LoRa that's in Reach RS Plus and also the new module that's uh, available for the M Plus operates in uh, frequency band uh, 868 to 915 megahertz. Um, and this frequency band is uh, uh, mostly a line of sight uh, frequency band. Um, so it's not really intended for penetrating buildings or terrain. It's not like the um, uh, higher power, uh, low frequency radio that uh, will bounce off the ionosphere. So we need to maintain that line of sight. Um, here's a little picture about uh, the different types of uh, radio propagation. So. Um, the lower bands, you can do some bouncing off the ionosphere, uh, but with these uh, low power radios that we want to use, that are fr free to use, we need to maintain this line of sight. So if you're going a long distance, you need to make sure your antenna height is uh, sufficient. So you normally you're just going to put your base on a high point. I think that's the next slide. Oh, not quite. Um, so yeah, here we're up at the top one here, 900. 900 megahertz. Um, so we have limited maximum data rates. Um, and that's, I mean, we can get more data if you're closer. With, and But if you're further away, you just lower the data rate and slow things down a bit. Um, so here it says, uh, this is a contradiction a little bit. We said it's not, uh, it's line of sight. But you know what? It can, it can go through a little bit of vegetation, trees, leaves, and things. Um, Okay, I'm going to skip this. So here we have the, the graphic. Uh, you know, if you're going to choose a base station loca location, you want to put it up on a high point so your, uh, your rover, no matter where it is, can have a good view and get a great signal. 
Um, so that's just a very basic rule to have a good result. Um, so now, in, in order to uh, you know, increase the range, um, something must be sacrificed. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the bandwidth. So normally we'd be operating at uh, full bandwidth, which is 18 kilobits a second. And, uh, and we'd have uh, maximum uh, RTCM three messages. So we're going to reduce that down uh, to close to the minimum. Minimum is 0 0.81. Um, and uh, yeah, next slide. So when we're going to minimize the data, we need to minimize the amount of messages. So here is, uh, you can go with just GPS L1 and your station coordinates, and that is just the bare bones minimum. Um, and we're going to reduce our, radi our transmission rate of those messages, GPS, at uh, half hertz, so once every two seconds. And uh, the station coordinates will come through at 0 0.1 hertz, which is once every 10 seconds. All right, so setting up the base. So here's that uh, in picture form uh, in the reach view software. We just got the top two boxes checked and uh, frequency set. And like I say, normally when you're having close operations, you'd have uh, several more of these selected. And over here is the LoRa radio setup. We have our frequency set at 915. Some of you would probably be better off with 868 for your country. Um, and then we have the power bar slid to the max. And our air data rate is set to one of the lowest values here, 1.46 kilobits per second. All right. So in this particular test, um, we picked a, uh, a GCM, uh, geodetic control point. Uh, so they've already got a mountaintop here. It's, uh, I live on an island. Right, it's quite rocky, a lot of terrain, so it's hard to find points that are um, visible to each other that, at a great distance without, you know, climbing a lot of mountains. This one was uh, a park. I had to um, walk a total of four kilometers to get to this point, but it's a really nice place, so why not? Uh, so our rover location is up there in the distance, way beyond what you can see because there's a bit of fog this day. Here's a little picture of the spot we're sitting on. And uh, here's my base. So I'm ab abandoning this base for like over a day, and there's a lot of people around. And so I've got little stickers on there, survey in progress, do not disturb. And I've hauled a lovely large rock and sort of uh, guy wired it down there because it can get quite windy and I didn't want it to shift. So, and there's not really much to dig in here in the bedrock. Okay, so for this, we're using one of the original Edison based uh, Reach RS. Um, it's got the latest 2.15.3 uh, development build. Actually, there's a newer one now, but. Uh, um, what we're showing with that is that uh, even the older versions that people may own um, will still run the, uh, the latest software, no problem. Okay, setting up the rover. Uh, here we are at uh, another point of land. It's just this, there's no GCM here. I just uh, decided to pick the uh, picnic table just for fun because it's visible on the ortho photo. And... Uh, so here we go, rover set up on your traditional pole with bipod. And um, the base location is going to be just in the fringe of the trees there, not actually on the line of sight I have. I had to move over just for the to take a better picture, otherwise the base would have been hiding here. And just another photo. Okay, here's the results. All right, so we can see we've got uh, 14 satellites picking up from the base. The rover is seeing 27, and that's because uh, we have all the satellite constellations enabled. Um, we're not transmitting all the data across. We're saving the raw log. We'll be able to do a PPK solution later if we need to. 
and uh, but here you can see um, we have a two two second delay on the radio, which is great because we're only transmitting uh, once every two seconds. It goes from two to three to two to three, it's totally fine. Then you actually we've got little guidance here in these little green dots just to show you uh, there's green, yellow, red, you know how you're doing. So green, green, red on the baseline, which I'll explain in a bit. So our AR ratio, once we climb up to uh, just over three, that's when uh, the fix happens. And uh, so we're, we're, up, we're climbing past there up through 16, which is, uh, you know, gives you a good level of confidence that your point is going to be good. And uh, the baseline is shown in red because, you know, uh, the, the further we go, uh, the less accurate we are. But, you know, this is the point of this test. We want to go as far as possible. So we're going to be operating in the red zone. Um, here you can also see the green bars. This is the, the rover uh, signal to noise ratio, and all great. And there's the um, G stands for uh, GPS, of course. And these are the only satellites we're picking up from the base. So you can see the light gray bars there indicating the base, uh, the base signal to noise ratio, also great. So this is the open source RTK lib uh, program uh, RTK plot and what we're seeing here is the um, east west measurement north south and up down so um, I started this log uh, basically what does it take five seconds I switch from uh, static mode to uh, or from single mode to static and then uh, turn the log on so uh, we've got a pretty accurate depiction of how long it takes to obtain a fix at this distance. And, uh, yeah, 44 seconds is all it took. So, oh, I should say that you can see how solid the fix is. It's very stable. Um, I'll go forward again. So now here we've got a different view. We're seeing we start off with uh, nine satellites at the top here. Uh, and it just bumped up to uh, 12 or 11 and 12, and we obtained our fix at that point. Um, here, this is age of differential. This is a really good indication of what's going on with the radio. So we've got this little sawtooth pattern here because um, it's showing between two to th three seconds delay, and uh, that's you know exactly what we expect here. We had some packets drop out, like two packets, one, two, no big deal. It can uh, overcome that, but Overall, we got a pretty solid radio transmission shown by that graph. And here's our ambiguity ratio. And this is steadily climbing, which is uh, showing that, you know, we've got a quite a good fix. A good fix. Excuse me. Okay, so um, I guess we're just showing here. This is the uh, overview of the uh, base location. It's uh, quite a forested area, but we've got up above the trees, so it's good. Um, here's the ortho photo showing that, uh, yeah, we're up on the high point. And this is the rover location, um, also out on a point. We're by the sea, obviously. And the ortho there. Okay, so there's the overview of, of where we are. So 13 and a half kilometers, it's pretty good. Um, so then uh, what else can we do? We can have a distraction. So here we are. And uh, yeah, there's some sea lions playing, you know. Uh, and then all of a sudden, oops, this is a little bit out of time, but this really happened. I had to, re I had to stage it because I actually did this uh, in the dark. So I leaned my rover pole up there, turned my back for two seconds, and it hits bedrock. And I'm thinking, oh, no, what's what's happened now so here we go there's uh, definitely some damage but uh, lights are on it, th it uh, you know it takes a beating it still works and uh, I was able to continue but uh, yeah please don't try this at home folks take care um, all right so here's a second test here we are at a nice picturesque spot it's uh, Sheringham lighthouse on the west coast of Vancouver Island in Canada. Um, there's a nice uh, GCM marker right here. 
the lighthouse has its own marker, but it's not as uh, not as great of an accurate point. Um, another nice photo. There's the point. Oh yeah, there's the lighthouse, the main marker, but like I say, it's not uh, not an accurate spot to be sitting on. Result of that. Okay, so now we've got some serious distance here, folks. We can see 21.1 kilometers. Uh, we've obtained a fix. It's similar to the last one. You know, we were, we're tracking uh, 15 satellites on the base, 28 on the rover, and uh, same. Our age of differential is great. Our AR ra validation radio is lower than last time, but it's on a slow climb, but that's because we're at a much further distance. So we're going to get there. And again, here is RTK plot showing uh, um, we're starting initialization here. And uh, it took, oh, and you can see when we get the fix, it's also solid and stable. And we got one minute, nine seconds till fix at 21.1 uh, kilometers. So that's pretty, uh, pretty impressive, I think, for a single frequency receiver. Um, and then again here, you can see the radio. We're having a little more dropouts. We're getting probably to, uh, to the limits of uh, range for this data rate. There is lower data rates. We could probably get further. I don't know. All right, just overview of the location again. So um, right there is where the rover was. And there's the uh, ortho for the same. So there's the previous test at 13, and then there's 21.1 kilometers. So that was uh, I was really impressed to see that distance. And so the conclusion here is that uh, the lower radio embedded in reach, and uh, and don't forget the uh, the new um, module available for the reach M plus. You can go 21 kilometers if you have the line of sight. Um, so that's that's the lesson here. Make sure you have great line of sight, and you'll get uh, great results. And um, yeah, well if you wanted to do long range, then remember less is more. Um, just Reduce your data rate a bit, uh, reduce your messages, and you'll, you'll get that range. Okay, so this is, I'm not going to get into this, but just, uh, just to add, you know, on, along the range lines is that, you know, the stock antenna is just a dipole antenna, and um, you, could, uh, you could switch out to something uh, more directional, for example, Yagi, and uh, you could potentially get... Um, uh, as long you know, as long as you know the direction from your base that you'll be working, you could point a Yagi that way, and you could maybe get more vegetation penetration, or you know, there's uh, or you get more distance. Um, so that's something to think about, and uh, it's really easy to just unscrew the antenna and put another one on. So there we go. Thank you.